I'm in SPSS and I'm going to have a look at the what is a disease um, survey data set and we're going to have a look at doing some bar charts and a chi-square analysis now. There are a lot of variables in this data set. If I just scroll through, this was quite a large survey um, and they asked four different groups of people. If I just click into here, I've added these labels in. They had lay people, uh, doctors, nurses and members of parliament and they were asking these four different groups of people whether each of these conditions over on the left here um, is a disease and then if it should receive state funding, so tax money to treat it. Now it doesn't come with all the labels added in so for the baldness I've added in the strongly agree, disagree, neither agree nor disagree, agree, strongly agree. Um, now you can copy and paste these, so if you are in the label for one of them and you control C, um, you can actually just paste that into another variable and this is quite handy because it will save you a lot of typing time as you can see if you were going through to code this by hand, uh, that would take you a long time. Now the other thing you may want to do is add in a label here, uh, is bald can't spell, baldness a disease. You may want on the chart just a reminder of what, what is the question, is baldness a disease? Um, and then should should treatment for baldness be funded. Should treatment for baldness be funded? And obviously that's a longer question, um, funded by the state or by taxes. We'll just put that in there as a reminder. So before we do a test, I'd like to do a graph to have a look at um, the data just to see how people responded. And you can see that if I take these out, uh, I have chosen a clustered bar chart, so under the bar option, clustered bar chart. Now it's a little bit up to you and up to the data you're looking at which way around you look at these. Now I've sort of decided how I would like to see this. Um, it's possible it will make more sense to you if it's drawn a different way and you'll have to experiment with your data just to see which displays it in the best way for whichever relationship you're trying to show. So what I would like to see is, is baldness a degree, a disease on the x-axis from strongly disagree to agree? And then I would like to cluster by group. So this is lay people, doctors, nurses and members of parliament. If I click OK on that. Now this sort of looks OK in that I can see how many of each group agreed or disagreed with baldness being a disease. The problem I have is that there were a lot more lay people surveyed than doctors, nurses or members of parliament. So when I look at the number of um, lay people who strongly disagreed with, with baldness being a disease, I can't actually tell if that's more or less than these other groups because there were simply more people, more lay people who were asked. So what I really want to know is as a percentage of the lay people, what percent of lay people strongly disagreed with baldness being a disease and what percentage of doctors strongly disagreed with baldness being a disease. So if I go back into graphs and chart builder, I've got my graph up from before. Now over here on the left, and if you don't have this, these element properties showing up, you'll need to click on this little button here, element properties, to get that back. At the moment it's just counting up all the data and I really want a percentage. Now it can calculate a few different percentages. It can calculate a percentage of everyone that was asked, no matter which group they're in, and that's not really going to help me very much in this case. It can do it as a percentage of the category, so that would be out of all of the people who strongly disagreed with baldness being a disease, what percentage of them were lay people. And that might be useful in some context and it might even be useful in this one but at the moment I really want to see as a percentage of each group so I'm going to use the total for each legend variable the same fill colour. So this means that if you add up all the percentages across the fill colour they should add to 100%. So I'm going to click on that, continue and apply and then OK. 
So now when I look across here, I can see that about 60% of lay people strongly disagreed with baldness being a disease. And then we've got, is that about 18% of uh, lay people disagreed, a few less neither agreed nor disagreed. And then we've got a very small percentage agreeing and strongly agreeing. But now that things are calculated as a percentage of of their group, I can look at a comparison. So we can clearly see that there are more doctors who disagree, strongly disagree with baldness being a disease than the other groups. Um, and we've also got this, a lot more members of parliament were, they disagreed with baldness being a, a disease, but they weren't so strong about it. So all of these differences here, now we might want to know are these differences in these groups statistically significant or is this just due to random variation? And the null hypothesis I want to test here is that there is no association between your um, profession and whether or not you think baldness is a disease. So that would mean that being a doctor or a nurse had no impact on whether you thought baldness was a disease and or being a member of parliament had no association with whether you thought baldness ha was a disease. And to do this test, we're going to do a chi-squared test of independence. So to run that test, we can go to analyze. You might think you would go to tables. Don't go to tables. Go to descriptive stats and cross tabs. Now, the test is mathematically it's the same, whichever you have as rows, rows or columns. But just for looking at it, you may prefer it one way round or the other. Um, if I quickly look on my other screen and see how I've done it in the notes, I've put the group as the row. So I'm going to put, take group and put that in the row. And then is baldness a disease? I'm going to put that in the column. Now I want to have a quick look through the options. That's fine. Statistics. Now I do want the chi-squared analysis. Um, I think we'll leave the rest of these. It's possible you would want to look at, especially with health data, uh, not so much with this data set, but with other health data sets, you might want to look at risk, relative risk and odds ratios, but we're not going to do that um, at the moment. Cells. Now we have our observed counts, and this is the data that was actually observed, the survey data. We might also want to see the expected counts. Now the expected values are what we would expect to see if there was no association between your profession and whether you classified something as a disease. If there is a big difference between what we observed and what we would expect to see if there was no association, um, then we can say then there probably is an association and this is essentially what the chi-square test is doing. And the other thing we might want to look at uh, it would be our standardised residuals just to see which, which of these differences was impacting our result the most because it's possible we're getting very close to ex observed values to our expected for a few of the groups and it's just one group that's behaving oddly so perhaps just the members of parliament are different to everyone else and this will make it easier to pick out which groups are being odd. So continue there. You can play around with this. Depending on how you're looking at your data, you can play around with some of those options if you want more information out. Um, I'll just leave that. Won't need bootstrapping. Now it's going to give us some bar charts. I usually just leave them on just in case anything interesting pops out. OK, so if I just expand this out. Importantly, it will give us a warning if we have any cell counts that are less than five. And this is a small problem. It's quite a large data set, but I don't believe they got a very good response rate from the members of parliament. And so we've got a couple of low expected cell counts for them. I think in this case, it's probably okay. Uh, if you do have a number of cell count, expected cell counts, which are less than five, it doesn't matter if the observed are less, it's just the expected ones. Um, then it could mean that the test is not going to give you an accurate picture of what's going on. The, the test we're looking at here, our null hypothesis is that there is no association between your profession and classifying baldness as a disease. We've got a very, very small p-value. This is the asymptotic significance two-sided. That's the p-value there. 
Uh, so therefore we've got very strong evidence against the null hypothesis and it does look like there is an association between your profession from these four groups only, not all professions, and whether you classify baldness as a disease. And we can have a little look to see where these differences are coming in. Now the quickest way to go through is to look at the standardised residuals and anything that is close to, anything that's far away from 0 or 1 minus 1 is having a strong effect. If it's close to 0 it's not having a strong effect, if it's far away from 0 it is. And by far away I mean being 2 or 3 or minus 2 or minus 3 with the standardised residuals. If you standardise then it's much easier to look at the size of the residuals because they will fall between approximately minus 3 and 3. So anything that has a size of between 2 or 3, whether it's negative or positive, is having is a long way from what we would expect to see if there's no difference. So if I look through here, I've got the doctors with a standardised residual of minus 3.6, if I get rid of that. Um, just having a quick look through and that's the biggest one I can see. So let's have a look at that cell. So what this is telling me is that if there was no relationship between your profession and classifying baldness as a disease, then we would expect to see 21.6 or let's say 22 doctors respond that they strongly agreed that baldness was a disease. However, what we actually have is only five, a lot fewer than expected. And so the, this would sort of imply that your medical training was having an impact on whether or not you saw um, baldness as being a disease because very few doctors strongly agreed that it was a disease. What's interesting to me, I think, is that we don't see the same effect for the nurses. So clearly there is a difference between doctors and nurses, even though they are both medical professionals. Um, and you can go through and look at some of these other big ones. We had a look at the, we saw this come out in the, the clustered bar charts that the members of parliament that seem to have an awful lot in the disagreeing with um, baldness being a disease. And where are the other big ones? Also the doctors again with agreeing and that they're all the biggest ones, so those ones there. And it's, sometimes it's helpful to go through and highlight those ones. And then once you've worked out what the differences is, uh, differences are, then you might want to go back to your um, graph and just pull out where those di be able to point to where these differences are. So the fact that we have so few doctors who strongly agree with arm baldness being a disease, and we didn't really pick up on this when we looked at the the graph before because it, our eyes are naturally drawn to the big blocks of colour, and the doctors not agreeing with baldness being degrees is an absence of colour. So it's this tiny little green thing here, but if we have a look at it, you can see that there are far fewer doctors than the other professions in this end bit of the bar chart. So one last thing I just want to have a look at quickly was something else that we looked at in the worksheet and that is if you do think that baldness is a disease, do you think the treatment should be publicly funded and is there a difference there um, between the different groups and you'd have to look at this a couple of ways. The main interest I think, we can do it first with just the, the groups, so rather than is baldness a disease Let's have a look at should treatment, see I should have put baldness at the start of that label. Should treatment for baldness be funded? And it looks like most people do not agree that treatment for baldness should be funded. Who does agree with it? Let's have a look. A few nurses and a few lay people strongly agree with it. There are other people that agree with it. Now I might be interested in if you agree that it's a disease are you more likely to also agree that it should be publicly funded or doesn't that matter your classification of disease or not as to whether you think something should be funded. So to have a look at this I'm going to put um, I'm going to put should the treatment be publicly funded as the group and I'm going to put is baldness a disease 
on the x-axis. Now because I want to look at something a little bit differently here, uh, what I want to see here is out of the people that strongly disagreed that baldness was a disease, what percentage of those thought that it should be publicly funded. So I actually want my percentages to go the other way around. So I want my uh, the percentages to be calculated out of each x-axis category. You may have to sort of think about this for a while before it makes sense and probably do the graphs a few different ways and try to read them because it, it can be a little bit confusing. So what's interesting here if we just have a look at the two extremes and ignore the middle stuff for the moment. So is baldness a disease? We have a lot of people who strongly disagreed with baldness being disease. And then if we look at the colour of this, we can see that they also strongly disagreed that it should be publicly funded. Out of the people who strongly disagreed that baldness was a disease, no one thought, no one strongly agreed that it should be, the treatment should be funded. However, if we look at the other extreme, these people who strongly agreed that baldness is a disease, some of them thought it is a disease but the blue line means they don't think it should be publicly funded whereas the yellow line means they do agree that it should be publicly funded, that's this one here. So what we see is this kind of split where if you didn't agree with baldness being disease you also don't think it should be publicly funded but if you do think it's a disease, some people still think it shouldn't be publicly funded and some people think it should. And then you can see that it's sort of, we've got every combination in between of those two things. Now what's interesting I think is if you compare this with the autism data, you also have this split where a lot of people don't think autism is a disease, but even if they strongly disagree with it being a disease, they do agree that it should be publicly funded, the treatment should be. So it's worth having a look at a few of these different uh, conditions just to get your head around what the data is telling you. So if we go down to autism, there's and there's lots of, you know, there's lots of interesting ones in here. Is gambling a disease? Is smoking a disease? Those sorts of things. So the A is, is it a, is it a disease? And I haven't gone through and put labels for all of these, so we'll just have to live with that as being autism A for the moment. And then B is, should, it be pub should the treatment be publicly funded? So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to leave the rest the same. So here we can see the opposite. If you have a look at the pattern in this data and the pattern in this one, we're kind of getting the opposite pattern in that the people that strongly agree that it was a disease also tended to strongly agree that it should be publicly funded. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum where people strongly disagreed that it was a disease, they were kind of split as to whether it should be pub treatment should be publicly funded. So even if people strongly disagreed with autism being classified as a disease, they may have strongly agreed with the treatment being publicly funded. And so these kind of differences I think are very, very interesting, uh, especially if you're involved in policy making for public health and working out where the money goes as well. Definitely from this you'd want to pub <laughs> put money into treatment for autism rather than treatment for baldness. I'm not sure anyone would disagree with that. So this is quite an interesting data set and it's worth going through and just having a look at some of these. And again, you can run the chi-square test on that if you want to. Um, you should be able to probably guess the results. And when you're looking at these, you probably want to put some labels in just to make the graphs easier to read and, and also put these value labels in here because the 1s, 2s, 3s and 4s are not particularly easy to work with. You have to constantly remind yourself what they need, mean, whereas this is much easier with the labels.